1991, for Christmas, I got a Lego train. It was amazing. 20 years later, I found it and set it up again. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! This is really boring. This Christmas, I got an Arduino. This little board is a programmable controller. You plug it into your PC, write some really simple code, and then wire up the Arduino to the things you want to control. In this case, Lego trains. In this video, we'll cover the basics of setting up an Arduino to drive a Lego 9V train. You'll need one Arduino, one L298N motor controller, one 12V power supply, a homemade power cable, a few wires, and a Lego train set. This one's the 4563 Loden Hall Railroad. This is the only modification you need to make to a Lego piece. This is an old 9V Lego Technic wire. As you can see, the rubber coating is perished and crumbling, and this wire is useless. But the plugs at the end can be removed and refitted to some new wire. You'll need some very small screwdrivers and some 0.35mm or American Wire Gauge 28 wire. Because I'm making a few of these, I've bought 6 meters of 8 core ribbon cable so that I can power more than one motor. One broken wire will make two motor control wires. Take your Lego wire and use the two screwdrivers to prise apart the clips at one end. and the base plate will easily pop out. Strip the ends of your new wire, bend them left and right, then bend the cable again 90 degrees upwards. We need to squeeze these wires into the metal clips to hold them and the stripped ends will make contact with the metal plates inside the plugs. Fold them over the center lump then press on the base plate with some pliers to hold the wires in place. If you have a multimeter, set it to measure resistance and make sure the plug isn't shorting out across its terminals. Connect this up to your LEGO train set terminal. The motor controller takes the instructions from our Arduino and converts them into signals to drive the train motor. It takes power from the power supply and can also power our Arduino directly if you need it. Each motor controller can drive two motors independently, but we're just going to set one up for now. Connect your new power cable to the motor terminals. We need three signal wires to the Arduino. Two of these, IN1 and IN2, are the signals to the motor. The other wire, ENA, is our pulse width modulation wire. I won't be too technical, but essentially this is our on-off and speed control wire. Connect your power supply to the power terminals. We also need a ground wire to link the motor controller to the Arduino's power system. This is the Arduino Mega. It looks complex, but we can break it down really simply. These pins are analog pins, they read variable values from different types of sensors, and the Mega has 16 of these. The digital pins can read switches, basically on or off, and can also switch things on or off, such as LEDs, and we have 32 of those. And the PWM pins are our pulse width modulation pins. These pins can output variable signals, which is perfect for motor control. There are 12 of these, and a few of the digital pins can do the same job too. The rest are communications and power pins, and we don't need to worry about these just yet. For now, Connect your IN1 and 2 pins to the digital pins
connect ENA to a PWM pin and take a note of the pin numbers for each. We're also going to connect that ground wire from the motor controller to one of the Arduino ground pins here. Then, just plug in your USB cable to get started. This is the Arduino IDE, a cool little tool for writing Arduino programs. Let's work through our basic program. We start by declaring which pins on the Arduino are doing something. Here we've got IN1 and IN2, plus our ENA pin. This is all we need to get our motor running. This void setup part is our startup section. We put things here that will run as soon as we turn the Arduino on. In this code, all we're doing is telling the Arduino that our digital pins are going to send out a signal, not take one in. And the void loop section will run over and over again from top to bottom for as long as the Arduino is powered up. Let's work through this code. To start, we're telling the Arduino what speed we want to run our motors at. We do this by giving ENA a number between 0 and 255. 0 is off and 255 is full power. By setting this to 120, our train motor will run at about half power. The actual speed depends on how heavy our train is. As a quick note, anything below 80 won't make our train move. The next part sets the train direction. Remember we've got two wires, IN1 and IN2. We can think of these like the ground and live, the positive and negative power wires. But the cool thing is, we can switch these around using the Arduino to change direction. So if we set IN1 to low, it's our ground wire, and set IN2 to high, it's our live wire, and the train will move forwards. If we set both to low, the train stops, and if we then switch them so that IN1 is high and IN2 is low, the train moves backwards. The one thing we can't do is set both to high. This can actually cause damage to either the motor controller or the motor itself. That's why we have this little low low section before we swap directions. The extra part of our code is the delay part. The delay command locks up the Arduino for this amount of time, which we set in milliseconds. This is a very lazy way of making a timer in Arduino code, and it's not advised for complex programs, but it's good enough to get our simple motor working. So the whole program will start up the train moving forward for 10 seconds, stop for 2 seconds, go backwards for 4 seconds, and stop again for 2 seconds and it will repeat that over and over until we turn the Arduino off. All that's needed now is to plug it in and let them go. And that's all it takes to get your LEGO trains moving via Arduino. Check out my other videos for more complex programs, including switch track control, train detection, and running two trains simultaneously. Thanks for watching.